Hey folks, it's French Red Builds here, and I'm back with another tutorial. This time, I will be going over the reverse wash process. The reverse wash process is used, it's used to paint pieces that have raised detail, such as this inner eye piece I have. It's used to paint pieces that have raised details uh, without having to mask everything. And as you can see, these eyes are tiny. Masking it would be really difficult and time consuming. It's not something that I wanna do. So um, because I have used this process in the past and I'm going to be using it for this, I figured I'd show you guys how to do it. With all that said, let's start talking about the things that you need to be able to do this process. First thing you need, primer obviously. Primer lets your paint adhere. You gotta use it whenever you're, you're airbrushing. So first step is primer. After that, we will be adding our base coats. First will be the ultimate gloss black, which is a really high gloss black from Gaia. And on top of the gloss black, we'll be using super fine silver. Um, the reason why you want to lay the silver on top of the gloss black is so that you can have the, uh, it, it accentuates the shine and the metallicness of the metallic paints. After that, you'll be coating your now silver piece with a, a layer of clear green. Right, so what this will make it look like is you have a, almost a metallic candy green, uh, which is kind of what you want for sensors and eyes that are supposed to be bright and loud and, and look like they're lighting up. So you will be following the silver up with this clear green, and you will be then sealing all of that with a high gloss paint. Oh. And one thing that I forgot to mention here is the importance of the kinds of paint that you use. Uh, as you can see here, I'm actually using the three main types of paint. I've got my lacquers, I've got an acrylic, and then I've got an enamel paint. It doesn't really matter what you use on the bottom, as in like beneath the enamel, but you just have to make sure that whatever you use on the bottom is resilient enough to withstand the enamel paint and the thinner on top. Lacquer is a stronger solvent or a stronger base than enamel is, so the enamel won't erode the lacquer, but you might have issues if you're using acrylic because enamel is, I believe, is a stronger solvent than acrylic is. But if you seal everything up with thin coats of a lacquer gloss coat, you should be fine regardless. Keep that in mind. Enamel has to be on top, always, and you wanna separate the enamel from the rest of your paints with a lacquer gloss coat. I also hear that uh, Mr. Mr. Top Coat works well too, uh, but because I'm using an airbrush, I use this. But yeah, just keep that in mind when you're going into this pro process. All right, now let's get back into the process. First up, we have to prime our piece. I'm using Mr. Servicer 1200 because it's the most reliable primer that I've used in my time airbrushing. Priming isn't rocket science. The goal is to cover your piece evenly and consistently, leaving a nice smooth surface for the next layers of paint to grab onto. If you're planning on painting anything glossy or metallic, the smoother your coats, the better the result. Once the primer is dried, next up is the glossy black layer. You can use any number of gloss black lacquer paints, but I'm using Ultimate Black by Guy Notes. It's my favorite gloss black to use because it's a nice deep black that really holds its gloss even after handling, but most importantly, goes on smooth and it's as glossy dry as it is wet. This is especially important for the next step. Now. We're on a laying down the metallic layer. I'm using Mr. Color Super Fine Silver 2, but any metallic silver or chrome paint will work. The whole purpose of this layer is to give your final product that bright, shiny look underneath the clear color you're gonna lay down after this. The glossiness of the black you sprayed beforehand has a direct result on how metallic or shiny your metallic silver or chrome will look. Once you're satisfied with the results, it's time to move on to your clear color. Next, we'll add our clear color layer. 
I'm using clear green from Tamiya because this particular kit I'm working on has green eyes and green sensors. But at this point, you can use whatever clear color you want. The key here is to essentially create a candy coat. The heavier you spray your clear color, the deeper the color gets. As you can see, the more I spray, the greener the piece becomes. But it still has this deep reflective shine due to the silver I used underneath. When you're done with the reverse wash process, this is what your raised areas will look like. Now, using Mr. Super Clear, it's time to seal up and protect everything we just painted with a gloss coat. It's important that you use gloss here and not matte or semi-gloss because you want the smoothest possible surface for the later steps of the process. Once your gloss coat is dry, it's time to switch things up. Now we're moving on to the only enamel paint of the process. I'm using Tester's Gloss Black because it's the easiest airbrushable enamel to get in my neck of the woods. And it's pretty easy to work with. The goal in this step is to cover your entire piece. This will be the backdrop for all of your race features. In this case, the eyes and the sensors will be green, while the rest of the piece will be black, mirroring the metallic foil stickers that come with the kit. Pay attention to the areas around the race features getting complete coverage. Enamel paint takes significantly longer to dry than lacquer paints, so give it a couple of hours as opposed to a few minutes like you would do with the lacquer layers. Okay. Now we have the very last step in this whole process. And this is, I guess this is the actual reverse washing. So in order to do this, you need a few things. You need some Q-tips. I like these fine tip Tamiya Q-tips because they work really well. You need some Zippo lighter fluid to wipe away the layer of enamel paint on the top of your raised surfaces. Um, you need a little dish just to hold the uh, lighter fluid in. It's a little bit easier to do it that way. And you need your actual painted piece. So as, as you can see here, this is the piece that we went through and put every single layer of paint from primer to, set, uh, to gloss black, to silver, to clear green, to a gloss coat, and then a black enamel. And this is where we are now. So in order to do the reverse wash process, you're gonna take some of your Zippo lighter fluid, pour a little bit in here. You are going to dip it. Not too much, but you're gonna dip it. And then you are going to find your raised edge and you're gonna start wiping away. There you go. I don't know if you guys can see it, but the green is starting to shine through. My advice to you guys on this is to change Q-tips often, because what you don't want is to start swirling around dry paint. And then you just carefully go over the raised edge don't want to scratch too much at it otherwise you'll start eating away at too much paint so that's one eye and if you mess up you can always and you can already see the the green eyes starting to poke out it's a slow process swap out q-tips Slow and steady until you're satisfied with your results. And I don't know if you guys can see, but here are the eyes. They're reflecting and they're looking good. Now let's go for the sensor up top. Slow, steady. And there you go. So here you have it. You have a bright reflective sensor as well as reflective eyes. And that's the reverse wash process. 
after this, generally you would follow it up with with another top coat or something to protect it. Um, after I'm done wa of doing the reverse wash on this, I won't be painting this anymore. So I'm probably gonna go ahead and seal all this up with another layer of top coat. But that's the process, guys. That's it. I'll uh, come back. I'll come back in a bit with a wrap up and uh, show you the final results. If you look carefully. These are the stickers that this came with. And here is the reverse wash paint job that I did. Look at that. What's great about this is you aren't limited to the stickers that they give you. You can make it whatever color you want, however you want it. And it's just a really neat way to use your paintbrush, or your airbrush, I should say. But yeah, guys, that's it for the tutorial. Hope you guys learned a lot, and I hope you guys can use this to make your, your painted builds a little bit better as well. Well, everyone, that's it for the reverse wash technique. Uh, just to quickly refresh how it's done, it's primer, then a coat of gloss black, followed up by silver or chrome, then your clear color, for me it's clear green. And then you seal it all in with a gloss coat. And then once you get the gloss coat on, you cover the whole thing in an enamel black. And once that's dry, you take your lighter fluid and your Q-tip and you slowly wipe away, slowly wipe away at the raised areas. And eventually the clear color that you painted before will start to peek through and that's the reverse wash well thanks guys for coming to my page and letting me show you how to do the reverse wash if you like this video please like it and if you enjoy the content that I'm pushing out could you please like my page and subscribe and follow me on Instagram because that's where I post most of my work so uh, I appreciate you guys and I'll see you in the next video Bye.